My name is Dr. Flanagan. I'm a urologist at the Vancouver General Hospital in Vancouver, British Columbia, and I'm associated with the University of British Columbia. I serve as a clinical lead for the Prostate Cancer Supportive Care Program Sexual Rehabilitation Clinic. In this video, we're going to be talking about treating urinary leakage with sexual activity. So why does urinary leakage occur following a radical prostatectomy or surgery for prostate cancer? Well, during the process of a prostatectomy, it involves disruption of the bladder neck, which is one of the two sphincters involved in urinary control, and results in complete urinary control relying upon the external urinary sphincter. As a result, this can lead to stressed urinary incontinence, meaning that you can leak urine with laughing, coughing, exercising, and movement. This can be to varying degrees. Some individuals will have none, and some individuals may have more. This may be due to the damage to the sphincters, as previously mentioned, as well as to the pelvic nerves during surgery, which may contribute uh, to some of these issues. Typically, Leakage of urine is at its worst immediately after surgery when the catheter is removed and tends to improve gradually over the next 6 to 12 months. There can be some difficulties with urinary leakage following radiation therapy as well. Typically with radiation therapy it may impact some of the pelvic nerves but it may also irritate the prostate and the bladder. In this case, it often results in something called urgency incontinence, which is defined as leakage of urine associated with a strong sensation uh, or desire to void or pee. Following brachytherapy, when seeds are placed into the prostate to treat the prostate cancer, some men may experience difficulties emptying their bladder, or we call it retention, and this may lead to difficulties peeing and in fact overflow incontinence when the bladder is full and there's some associated leakage. Some men may also experience urinary leakage several years following radiation therapy due to some of the tissue changes. Beyond the conventional forms of urinary leakage that we discuss, some individuals may also experience urinary leakage during sexual activity. Now, if it's during the sexual activity and stimulation, we typically call this arousal incontinence. If you have leakage occurring during climax or orgasm, we refer to this as climacteria. And we think that this may occur because of the increasing pressure in the pelvis during orgasm. However, the mechanism hasn't been fully elucidated yet. Now, this may occur between 22 and 43% of men following a radical prostatectomy or surgery. And some men only experience urine leakage with sexual activity and not in their day-to-day -day activities. This may also occur in about five to five and a half percent of men following radiation treatment, such as external beam therapy, brachytherapy, or some combination of the two. So if you do have urinary leakage during sexual activity, what are some of the things that you can do? First, we always recommend going with the most conservative options. If we can solve the problem with this, fantastic. We don't have to move on to something more invasive. Some of the things that you can try here include emptying your bladder before sexual activity. If you can completely empty your bladder, this is going to significantly reduce the risk of leakage of urine during sexual activity or with climax. You can also think about the environment that you're being sexually active in. If you're worried about leakage of urine and it's quite significant, then perhaps you might consider sexual activity in the shower or bath or an area that you're not worried and anxious about leaking. Similarly, you can place a towel or an absorbent pad um, near you uh, during sexual activity uh, to help protect uh, the environment around you and again, reduce some of that stress and anxiety. And you can think about your sexual position as well. Some of the pressure placed on your lower abdomen or your bladder might be responsible for some of the leakage of urine. So if certain positions can avoid that pressure, it may be beneficial as well. Beyond these conservative me methods, you can also engage in pelvic floor physiotherapy. This involves uh, a different array of options. So the commonly known Kegel exercises where you strengthen and clench the urinary sphincter have been shown to improve pelvic floor muscle tone and strength 
and may also help in this urinary leakage. Conventional pelvic floor physiotherapy, where you're working with uh, an expert uh, pelvic floor physiotherapist, may also help train these um, pelvic muscles, and they may use additional methods such as biofeedback to help you identify it and strengthen these muscles. In our prostate cancer support of care program in module five, uh, pelvic floor physiotherapy for bladder concerns, uh, you can certainly reach out uh, to this expert and uh, they will help you through this process. We also have a group education session that's available online as well as through telehealth and clinic appointments are available presently in Vancouver and Victoria and hopefully additional sites to follow. We also remember that urine is sterile. Uh, it's typically not infected in most instances so it may be unpleasant uh, but it certainly shouldn't pose a risk of harm to yourself or your partner. Certainly, if the area is wet, you'll want to dry that and keep the area nice and clean, but the urine itself shouldn't be damaging. Now, if physiotherapy and these exercises aren't working, there are certainly some devices that may also help. There's a wide assortment of devices available. One that we have uh, some experience with is either trying a tension band uh, that's commonly used uh, to maintain an erection, and sometimes that will provide enough pressure on the urethra or the P-channel at the bottom of the penis to close this and prevent that leakage. A device that's more specifically designed for stopping urinary leakage during sexual activity is called the Eurostop device. There's a clinical trial that was actually performed uh, evaluating the effectiveness of this device and what they found was that there was a significant improvement in the amount of leakage. So if you look at the table here, you see in the pre-treatment, prior to using Eurostop, all of the individuals had some degree of leakage. 16% had a small amount, 72% had a moderate amount of leakage, and 12% had a large amount of leakage. After using the Eurostop device, no individuals uh, continued to have a large amount of leakage. Only 26% had moderate leakage, 28% had small leakage, and 46% had no leakage at all. When they asked patients and their partners regarding their distress associated with the urinary leakage, this also drastically improved. Patient distress before treatment was about 14%, and that dropped down to 2% after treatment. And similarly, the partners were more commonly distressed in about 61% of individuals and this changed quite dramatically down to 11% following use of the Eurosoft device. So this is certainly something that can be really helpful for uh, individuals uh, engaging in sexual activity with problems of urinary leakage. Now, if none of these options are, have been successful, then we may consider uh, some forms of surgery to help with your urinary leakage. This is often helpful if you have more generalized uh, stress urinary incontinence, or it's very distressing the amount of urinary incontinence or leakage that you do have. There are a few different options for surgical reconstruction. It may involve a male urethral sling or an artificial urinary sphincter. These are slightly different devices, and the treating urologist would certainly perform an evaluation and have the discussion with you regarding what device would make more sense and would be better suited in your particular situation. Just want to take this opportunity to thank all of our supporters for the Prostate Cancer Supportive Care Program. The Specialist Services Committee provided funding to help us initiate this program in January of 2013 and more recently the Ministry of Health has provided funding in 2017 that allowed for the provincial expansion of our program uh, to reach more British Columbians uh, with sexual dysfunction and survivorship issues following prostate cancer. I would also like to acknowledge all of the other agencies that have supported our program throughout the years, as well as the individuals and families that have provided generous philanthropic support. If you'd like to look more into our program or connect with us, here are our contact details, uh, including our uh, email, website, Twitter, and Facebook programs. Thank you.